Guys, for all the solutions of this book, visit forthesakeofeducation.com. I've been working hard of putting all the problems into one convenient place for you to be able to do your homework easily. So pay us a visit. Let's do this problem that says a 10 kilogram uniform rod is pinned at the end A. If it is also subjected to a couple of moments of 15 Nm, meters, determine the smallest angle theta for equilibrium. The spring is unstretched when theta equals zero and has a stiffness of k is equal to 16 Nm. meters. All right, guys, let me warn you from right now that this book throws you a very annoying problem every 50 problems or so. This one is that annoying problem and it's a bit of a pain and it took me a little bit to get it, but let me explain it to you. So. Drawing the free body diagram, we know that at the halfway point, we have the weight, and the weight is equal to the 10 kilograms times the acceleration of gravity, which is 9.81, which is 98.1 newtons. Then you have this force at B, and let me just draw this line right here and this is also equal to that angle theta okay it's important for you guys to understand that um and yeah and we have the moment right here of 50 newton meters and that's our free body diagram so we're gonna do the assuming kind of clockwise is positive the sum of the moments at a is equal to zero and at a we have the 50 newton meters which is negative because it's trying to turn it clockwise. Then we have, and this is important, if this force right here is f of b, then the projection along this dotted line that I drew, let's call it f of prime b, right? And we know that f of prime b is equal to f of b cosine of theta, okay? And we know that that is what's creating a moment because f of b has two components, a component going along with the rod and a component going, going perpendicular to the rod. And the component going along the rod is not generating a moment. That's why we need that projection. So that projection is the only one generating a moment and it's f of b cosine of theta times the distance from a to b, which is two meters. And it is positive because it's actually trying to turn it counterclockwise. And then you have the acceleration of gravity times this distance right here, which is W times sine of theta. It's times the half point of the rod, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So it's 1 times sine of theta, but I'm not going to write the 1 because 1 times sine of theta is sine of theta. And it is negative because it's trying to turn it clockwise. So this is our equation. Now, let me call this for now equation one. And I'm going to play a little bit with this equation. It's important also to know that f of b is equal to the stiffness k times l. The stiffness is 60 times L, and L is the distance from here to B, right? And it's given by, it's given by uh, 2 sine of the angle theta, which is the angle that we're trying to find. So F of B is equal to 120 sine of theta, right? And we're going to plug that into here. And then equation 1 is going to look something like this. 0 is equal to negative 50 plus 240 sine of theta cosine of theta minus 98.1 sine of theta. Now, from trigonometry, because we have to solve this, we have one equation and we have one variable, which is theta, which is happening in three places but we need to figure it out. So from trigonometry, you know that sine of theta is equal to two tangent of theta over two over one plus tangent square of theta over two. And we also know that cosine of theta is equal to one minus tangent square 
of theta over 2 all over 1 plus tangent square of theta over 2. These are equations 2 and 3 and basically I'm going to plug them in to equation 1. So I'm going to replace sine of theta with this and I'm going to replace cosine of theta with this. And I'm going to make a new page and try to be as organized as I possibly can. When you plug them in, you're going to get that the equation is equal to 0 is equal to 240 times 2 tangent of theta over 2 over 1 plus tangent square of theta over 2 times 1 minus tangent square of theta over 2 over 1 plus tangent square of theta over 2 minus 98.1 2 tangent of theta over 2 over 1 plus tangent square of theta over 2 minus 50. Now I'm going to replace tangent of theta over 2 by x. This is an x, I swear. So every time you see a tangent of theta over 2, you're going to put an x. And when you see a tangent square of theta over 2, you're going to put an x square because it's x square, basically. The equation will look something like this. 240 times 2x times 1 minus x square all over 1 plus x square minus 98.1 2x over 1 plus x square minus 50. And I'm sorry, this is a square right here because you're multiplying this by this. Almost skip that part. That's the same mistake I made while I was making the exercise and I have to go back. So next step, 0 is equal to, we're basically multiplying this whole equation by 1 plus x squared squared over 1 plus x squared squared. That way, you know, this will cancel out, this will cancel out and put 1 on top and it will put, nothing will cancel out on the 50 and put uh, 2 on top. Actually, sorry, we're just multiplying. We're multiplying the whole equation, multiplying the whole equation by this. And um, this will look something like this now. 480x minus, actually, I'm skipping one step on my notes. Sorry about that, guys. It will look something like this. 240 times 2x minus 2x cubed, because I multiply this also, um, minus 98.1 times 2x times 1 plus x square, minus 50 times 1 plus x square square. All right, let's keep going. This is equal to 480x minus 480x cubed. This is because I multiply this. Minus 196.2x uh, minus 196.2x cubed. That's because I multiply this by this. And then I multiply this by this too. And last but not least, I did the square of this, which remember is a plus b squared is equal to a squared plus 2ab plus c squared. So, <clears throat> and then multiply it all by 50, and it looks something like this. Minus 50 minus 100x squared minus 50x to the fourth. Okay, now you have to um, add the like terms, and the like terms are x to the 4, to the 3, x, I'm sorry, this is x, and this is x, and this is x squared, and this is 50. So you got to add the like terms, 
and you get that 0 is equal to minus 50x to the 4 minus 676.2x cubed minus 100x squared plus 283.8x minus 50. And yes, we have a very, very ugly polynomial that we have to solve for x. You can plug this into your calculator or you can do Newton's law of approximation, which will take me a long time to explain in a video. So I'm just going to leave that up to you guys. But if you plug it into your calculator, into your TI-89, hopefully you're using for this, you will get that x is equal to 0.419 or minus 0.8197 or 0.218 or minus 13.34. This is the answer to this very nasty polynomial. Let me add another page. Now, with those answers, you know that x is equal to tangent of theta over 2. So you know that theta is equal to 2 tangent inverse of x. I just solved for x on, on this equation to get that. And now I'm going to make myself a nice little table with the solutions. We got x and we got theta. So remember x can be equal to 0.218. I'm ordering them 0 0.419 negative 0.8197 or negative 13.34. So if you plug each of these x values into here and the calculator, you're going to get that the answers are 24.6 degrees, 45.47 degrees, negative 78.68 degrees, and negative 171.43 degrees. You can already tell just by looking that theta going this way, it's uh, theta is, is positive if theta is going this way, so it has to be between uh, 0 and 90 degrees. So let's put that theta has to be between 0 and 90 degrees. So you know that this answer and this answer are wrong. This answer are right, but we're going to pick the 24 as the final answer, 24.6 degrees as the final answer because determine the smallest angle for equilibrium. So there's two angles for equilibrium, which is 24.6 and 45.47 degrees. But the smallest one for equilibrium is 24.6 degrees. Final answer.